everyone. Welcome to What Does the Bible Teach with Pastor Joshua Olivares. I'm Jamie, and in today's episode, our topic of discussion is about women pastors. Does the Bible teach that a woman can be a pastor? And if not, what are the passages in the scriptures that prohibit this? Also, would it be all right to call a woman a pastor if the Bible teaches otherwise? And lastly, what is the role of the woman in the church? So, Pastor Josh, without further ado, what does the Bible teach? Thank you, Jamie. Now, the Bible teaches us here in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3, starting at verse 1. It is a trustworthy statement. If any man aspires to the office of overseer, it is a fine work he desires to do. An overseer, then, must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not addicted to wine or pugnacious, but gentle, peaceable, free from the love of money. He must be one who manages his own household well, keeping his children under control with all dignity. But if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? And not a new convert, so that he will not become conceited and fall into the condemnation incurred by the devil. And he must have a good reputation with those outside the church, so that he will not fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So based on what we see in verses 2, 4, 5, and 7, the pastoral office or role is clearly designated for the man only. Because according to verse 2, an overseer must be above reproach the husband of one wife. Then in verse 4, he, not she, but he, must be one who manages his own household well, keeping his children under control with all dignity. Then in verse 5, but if a man, not a woman, but if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? And lastly, in verse 7, and he, not she, but he must have a good reputation with those outside of the church so that he will not fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Now, the reason for this is simple. God has given men and women their designated roles for his divine purpose, whether it be in the context of marriage or family or church order. Now, in the context of marriage, according to Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 22, the Bible teaches us, Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, Love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Then in 1 Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 1, In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives." As they observe your chaste and respectful behavior, your adornment must not merely be external, braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also who hoped in God, used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you have become her children, if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. You husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way, as with someone weaker, since she is a woman, and show her honor, as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. Now, when it comes to family, according to Genesis chapter 3, starting at verse 16, 
To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain, you will bring forth children, yet your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. Then in chapter 18 of the book of Genesis, verse 19, for I have chosen him so that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he has spoken about him. Then lastly, here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 3, But I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man, and the man is the head of a woman, and God is the head of Christ. Then lastly, the designated role of the man and the woman in relations to church order is found here in the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. Older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Then here in Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 11, And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Then here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting at verse 8, Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. Likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold pearls or costly garments, but rather by means of good works, as is proper for women making a claim to godliness. So we see the role of the woman and the man in the context of marriage, in the context of family, and in the context of church order. Now, in answering the question, are there passages in the Bible that prohibit women in taking on the role of an elder or pastor? Now, according to 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting at verse 11, a woman must quietly receive instruction with entire submissiveness. But I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. For it was Adam who was first created, and then Eve. And it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. But women will be preserved through the bearing of children if they continue in faith and love and sanctity with self-restraint. Now, verse 12 makes it emphatically clear that the woman is not to teach or exercise authority over the man in a congregational or church setting, which is to say, women are forbidden to fill in the office of a pastor or teacher and to exercise any form of ecclesiastical authority over men in any Christian assembly. Matter of fact, the word authority that is used here is from the Greek word authenteo, and this Greek word, which is used once, simply means to dominate, to act of oneself, to have authority. And this may have very well been one of the doctrinal issues that Paul had to address concerning the false teachings that were plaguing Ephesus, especially the uninformed women at that time, concerning their role in 
the church, which is seen here in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. As I urged you upon my departure from Macedonia, remain on at Ephesus so that you may instruct certain men not to teach strange doctrines, nor to pay attention to myths and endless genealogies which give rise to mere speculation rather than furthering the administration of God which is by faith. But the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. For some men, straying from these things, have turned aside to fruitless discussion, wanting to be teachers of the law, even though they do not understand either what they are saying or the matters about which they make confident assertions. Now, if we come back here to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11, a woman must quietly receive instruction with entire submissiveness, but I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. For it was Adam who was first created, and then Eve. And it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. So we do see here, however, that the woman is not to exercise or to take the role of a pastor, but rather, according to verse 11, she must learn quietly with all submissiveness. For this is quite consistent with the teachings of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, starting at verse 33, where the Bible teaches us, For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. The women are to keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but are to subject themselves, just as the law also says. If they desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is improper for a woman to speak in church. So we see here that the context is speaking of women interrupting and causing disruption while the message is being given. And therefore, to avoid these types of interruptions, the Bible teaches us in verse 35, if they desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is improper for a woman to speak in church. Now, to answer the question, is it all right to call a woman a pastor if it's not seen or taught in the Bible? And I would simply answer, if we could find anywhere in the Bible where women were ordained by God to be Levitical priests, apostles, pastors, or have ongoing prophetic ministries such like Isaiah to Malachi, and if we could find any women who authored at least one book in the Bible historically, then we could safely say yes. However, if not, then we must be faithful and truthful to the sacredness of Scripture seen in 1 Timothy chapter 3, where the Bible teaches us very clearly in verse 2, an overseer then must be above reproach the husband of one wife. Now, a husband is clearly a male, not a female. Now, if some were to object by saying, what about Deborah in Judges chapter 4? As John Calvin, the theologian, would say, the answer is easy. Extraordinary acts done by God do not overturn the ordinary rules of government. And God's divine decree in church government is that it is only the male that is to take on the office and role of a pastor and elder and not the woman. Now, the Bible does teach us that women have been and are an extraordinary gift and blessing in the body of Christ. God had used them to preach the resurrection of our Lord, as seen in Matthew chapter 28, verses 7 to 10. They were used by God to teach the ways of the Lord to Apollos in a private setting, according to Acts chapter 18, verse 26. They are called to instruct other women and even children, as seen in Titus chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, and 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Now, if there are no qualified men who could exhort, 
but there are women who are gifted to do so, it is to my assertion that she may do so in a proper setting and conduct without labeling herself as a pastor until God would send or raise up a male elder. But nonetheless, the point is, men are called to pastor and lead the congregation, while women are called to be the helpmeet of the man, learn in quietness and submission, look well to the cares of her household, and glorify God in her role and call as a woman. And that is why I pray that on today's episode, we have answered your questions biblically and clearly according to what is revealed in the sacred scriptures. If you have any questions concerning about today's episode or questions about the Bible in general, kindly let us know and we will do what we can to answer your questions on this podcast, What Does the Bible Teach? This is Pastor Joshua Olivares, just wanting to gladly remind you that Jesus Christ is God.